Hello Geeks and Gamers, it's Sir Guido again. I'm back here with another installment of my Geeky Gaming series. Uh, what I have for you this week is something that uh, I've been working on now for a couple of weeks. Um, it's a new series of dice bags. Uh, it's something that I've kind of thought about for a while now. Uh, I kind of had an idea for a couple of new designs. Um, I don't know, I think they're new anyway, I haven't seen them. Uh, they could not be. Somebody else might be doing them. But it's a little by dice bag design. I've got two of them here. Uh, this is my smaller one. Um, if you see here, it's uh, got some nice seams. I'll kind of get a little closer to the camera there so you can sort of see what's going on. Maybe, you know. Um, it's got a nice little cord keeper here. Silk cord. Nice satiny fabric on the outside. On the inside is a uh, more suede-like black fabric. Um, you open it up. First thing I want to show you is here on the outside. Um, instead of running a channel around the outside, I've got little loops here for the cord. Um, what that does is it allows the fabric to fold on itself so you get uh, a tighter closure. Uh, what, you've, what you notice sometimes, uh, at least I have, with larger dice bags is um, as you try to close them, the fabric kind of bunches up and you end up with a hole at the top uh, that the dice can easily fall through. This one here holds about 70 dice. I, yeah, I counted them in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, it's a good size for you know somebody with an, with an average size collection. Uh, as you can see, my fist fits in there. It's a decent shape and size here. You can kind of see the outside of the bag there. Uh, I'm looking probably somewhere in the range of $15 to $20 on this. I'm going to sell them at my local game store, probably. Um, that's my thought. Uh, I might give a little bit more thought to that before I actually decide for sure uh, exactly what I'm going to do uh, in terms of price. But I'm looking in the range of probably uh, $15 to $20 bucks for that one. Um, what I will uh, also do is I have a larger one here which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Give me just a second. Uh, this one, as you'll notice with the first one, uh, let's go back to that one quickly here. Um, the actual shape of it, it's got a square bottom, and it's got these sort of rectangular sides with a triangle at the top. Um, so what that does is when you close the bag, Again, here I'll kind of give you a little sh action shot of what I mean. Um, you can see that in there at all. So it's sort of the fabric sort of folds on itself. So when the bag is actually closed, it's fully closed. There is no hole there. See, I can't even get my finger in there. It's completely and totally tightly closed. Um, the little uh, loops here keep the string intact so it doesn't move around too much. Cord Keeper, of course, keeps you from having to tie a, a pesky knot. Uh, one of my favorite features is once you pull the Cord Keeper out, uh, the fabric is kind of stiff enough that it sort of opens on its own, but if it doesn't, you can grab one of these little corners and just sort of pull it and then fold them down and let's see if I can give you a shot of this here. The bag stands on its own completely by itself, um, so it open, stays open. So if you need to get some dice out to roll some, it's very easy for that for you to do that. Uh, now let's move on to the larger bag that I've got here, um, which I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and get it cinched up here. Um, it's much larger, as you can see. This one holds probably about 175 dice. I kind of counted and threw some in there, and that's about what happened. Um, now let me give you a little bit more, again, of an action shot with this one. You pull the cord keeper out. It's kind of still kind of bunched up, so you just pull these, fold them down, and you've almost got like a little dice bowl. You can reach in, grab what you need, and roll, and throw them back in, no problem. Um, everything kind of gets left in the bag, easy to get to, easy to find what you need for the most part. Obviously with a bag this size and so many dice, it is going to be difficult to grab exactly what you want at any time, unless they're right on top. But um, either way, I mean, it's much easier to grab a couple dice out of this and roll them, throw them back in, 
uh, than it would be to go with a s smaller dice bag or even one of the more the triangular style or the sorry rectangular styles that um, uh, don't really stay open. They're kind of floppy, for lack of a better term. Uh, I did. I have seen designs similar to this. They're generally in a triangle shape, where the base instead of a square in this one, in this case, with this one, or actually this one here is a octagon base, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, rather than that, it's got a triangle base, and the sides are also the triangles. The problem is they put the string here on the tips. They'll fold these tips over and run the cord through that. Well, when that happens and all these tips are brought together, you've got gaps here that dice can fall out of. That's that's not a good thing to me. Um, it's, it's just not practical because you're going to have dice all over the place and you're going to end up losing some of your favorite dice. Whereas a bag like this one, well, you won't have that problem. Now, again, you cinch that up nice and tight. See, there's... There you go. There's no uh, no gap in there. Again, can't, can't get my finger in there. So you don't have to worry at all about your dice falling out. Not at all. It's going to happen. Um, as I was showing you, saying before, the bottom on this one is a uh, hexagon shape. So, I mean, it's a good sized bag. Uh, I could probably uh, move forward and turn this into maybe an octagon shape uh, if I wanted to make it an even bigger bag. Um, for those huge collections. Um, I honestly think that this new dice bag design is going to change the way I carry my dice. I used to carry my dice like this. Uh, I, I had used dice bags for a while, but um, I just didn't really like the way they worked. So rather than dealing with them so that I could get to the dice the way I wanted to, I uh, had one of these uh, organizers left over from a... Uh, a fishing bo fishing tackle box that I had purchased for crafting supplies and uh, with all these little dividers inside as you can see here I'll put it right in front of my lovely face uh, I could separate things out like I've got six siders in here now and then I had four siders down here eights etc you know all divided out into different um, types of dice uh, which is great because you can just grab out what you need when you need it but something like this is just just nicer, I think. Um, and if you're anything like me and you have a ton of dice, I mean, I've got this whole bag full. I've got another bag over here. Plus, I have the ones left here in this organizer. Uh, what what I will probably do more than likely um, is I will separate my dice out into a bunch of different bags. I might have one bag like this one and, ma and maybe a couple of these uh, as well. Um, I will use maybe one of these. I'll keep in my car with a couple sets in it. So if I find myself at the friendly local gaming store and I happen to forget my dice, uh, heaven forfend, I might do something like that. But if I do, I've got a bag of dice in the car. Um, when I go to my gaming store, I may not just be going there to roleplay. I do go there also for uh, board games. Uh, we have board game meetups, things like that. So I might uh, just toss a bag like this into my bag that I carry with me for that. Um, so I can have some dice in case a, a roleplaying game does happen to break out is not unusual and has been known to happen at my friendly local gaming store. Um, but yeah, there's my uh, bags. I just kind of want to show everybody to those. Um, if you could, if you happen to see this video, just comment at the bottom. Let me know what you think of the bags, if you like the styles and the uh, design. Also, make sure to let me know what uh, you think they're worth. How much would you pay for one? Um, again, I got the, the square, the smaller size, and the bigger one. I get 70 dice or so to this one and about 175 in this one. Um, just let me know. I'd appreciate it. Uh, give me an idea of how much to sell them for at my local gaming store. Um, and speaking of my local gaming store, let me just give them a shout out. Uh, if you happen to be in the Cincinnati area, make sure to stop by Gateway Games and more. It's in the east side of Cincinnati, the Eastgate area, uh, right off of a road called Glenesty Withamsville Road. Uh, it's on the corner of Glenesty Withamsville Road and Kennedy's Landing, right in front of a, the Kennedy's Landing um, condo uh, development. Uh, it's a great store, owned by two great people, Todd and Wendy. Uh, they are awesome. They're the best uh, game store owners that I think I've ever encountered. They're awesome people, and uh, they're just great all, all around. Hell, they're good enough that uh, Ed Healy and the Gamerati Tour are stopping by after Gen Con. So Tuesday, August 9th, 
If you happen to be in the Cincinnati area, make sure to stop by at 5 p.m. so you can meet Ed Healy and uh, some other gamers. I uh, hope to see you there. If not, um, let me know about the bags. Love you. See you next time.